streaming. I think so. You'll find out when it goes red. I've gone live. I've gone live. Stream health is not good, apparently. Oh, come on, G, you've done live, man. Jesus, what the fuck is that? Says I'm live. Hmm. Right. Not yet. Where are you from? Oh, fuck, don't turn me off that shit. This is the problem with, like, having all these, uh... What kind of thing alphabetical order are you, back? Oh, don't. Mine don't. You... <clears throat> are you streaming to YouTube? Yeah. According to your YouTube page, you're not live. Apparently I am. I've got people in the live chat. Well, I can't find it. Oh. Hmm. Right, let's search for the silent robot stuff. Found him. Oh, no, what? No, according to this, you're not. You get a subscription. According to YouTube, I am. It's not. There's nothing there. No, it's pretty good. You're not mine. I can't find it. The last thing I can see is in the hand of Prince Dory. Yeah, they can hear you. Let's try that volume. That should be better now. Nothing came out. Oh, yeah. One minute ago, live. Hang on. You are live. I apologise. There you are. That you way. should be able to hear people now. Who's yeah. monitoring? It's all right. I've just turned my sound off on the... Uh... Yo, yo, hands in there. Don's in there. Notification just come up for me, so yeah, I'm there. Can you hear people now, Johan? Well, isn't that weird? I still don't have you as live. Yeah, I see him. He's got, he's got this chubby arch Linux up. Oh, right. So it's come up on the bell, but not on his website, not on the subscription yeah. list. Really? YouTube is so... Fact up, I tell you. <laughs> I'm telling you, any. So I'm going to keep my language down, being as one on the stream. Yeah, I'm eating my tea, Don. There we go. The stream out is good now. Yeah. What What kind of? I put 360p. Oh, well, I, don't, I don't need to see the stream, so disable preview. That's what I do. I just have a preview now. Actually, that was Steve's idea. Just have a preview in the RBS. Although my machine, it doesn't care. So yeah, I'll leave it on. Right. I just thought what I'd do on this one is give you guys a little bit of insight into how I build salient. Hang on, silent. Sorry to interrupt you, dude. Before you carry on, they're saying that we're very low, so you need to open your pulse audio and just increase the volume on the web IRC for your Discord. Web RTC is up. Otherwise, you'll be really loud and we'll be really quiet. No, oh. what he needs to do is open his bloody OBS up and give that a bit of a kicking. Probably. Uh, Web RTC. Probably on the OBS side, Mark. Monitor it, yeah, because you're already at 100% there, aren't you? Yep. Well, I've turned you guys up. Um... Hang on, let me have a look. Oh, I'll have like, excellent audio like I do, you know. <laughs> the thing is, you're, you're being passed through my uh, microphone audio because it's both output and input. Okay. So desktop audio is not active. Oh, I see. Well, I... you can add it as a separate audio channel in OBS silent if you want. All that needs to happen, you chaps, is turn your bloody microphone, not your microphones up, but your ears up, because I'm in the car and I can hear everybody. <laughs> hey, Zeb. Uh, Welcome to the stream, mate. Hello, Stuart. Hello, Zeb. How are you? That should be and better I got, for I the chat. I got chat. a better bloody notification from YouTube in the car than I do at home. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I know, because wow. I didn't see you on my stream, you miserable git. <laughs> <laughs> So if Johan can't hear you, tell him to take the cheese buds out of his ears and turn his volume up. Okay, I'll turn me down a little bit then. Good to see you, Rob. I hope you're doing all right, mate. I don't know. I'll probably get nicked because I'm driving and talking to you, chaps. <laughs> yeah, explain that one away, like. Well, I'm not on the phone. Morning, stuffy, sir. 
All right, I'm not going to explain all what's going on in this file to you, but this is how Salient gets built, and this is how an ISO gets generated at the end of it. Um, this is the, the build structure, and if I can show you where that comes from, then anyone interested in doing that for themselves at some point in time, if ever they get the inclination, it comes from the Arch ISO tools. Configs Relang, this is the base template. Now, if I was to right click in here or copy this Relang folder to my home folder and then just issue the build, it will build an Arch ISO as it exists today. Only it would be newer, up to date. So you take this as a template and then you copy it to your home folder and then you start configuring it to how you want it. So these package files here is what delivers the packages into the ISO. Packages x864 is x864 is the default packages that come with Arch. These are the base packages that come with it. They must be present. The rest of it is firmware files for Xorg, video, audio. This is where all the Vulkan, Radian stuff, the Mesa libraries, all the different libraries, networking, file sharing, printer support, all that goes into there to keep it separated. Uh, I3WM is not happening on this particular build because I'm just testing it out. And the packages that I want to come in will come into the packages file here. It's very simple. And what I've done, I've stripped all of the main packages out. This is just Arch stuff in here, wine staging, um, a few things that need to be there. Steam, obviously, the gaming side of Salient will never change. Those things will always be present, regardless of what I do to the ISO. Um, so today I just wanted to show you that process. So what I've done, to make things easier for myself, I've created a few aliases that facilitate in building, so I don't have to keep repeating myself when it builds, and I have to clean it out and then build again. So if I type clean, <clears throat> that clears the Pac-Man cache, the VAR cache, and everything's ready for me to start building. So if I do a build ISO, that's now going to go off. It creates the work folder over here. And this is the overlay. This is what is going to be on the ISO over here. So now this is just downloading packages directly from the Arch repos. And <clears throat> what you will see in a minute, it will be pulling packages in from the Salient OS repo, which is now active and live. So there are packages in there. So I will be maintaining packages in that repo. So when there's updates, if people install this version when I release it, you won't have to do a reinstall every time there's a new ISO update because the packages will be refreshed and you will just have to issue a pacman dash capital S Y U and you will have updates or you can just do pack update as you know, pack upgrade and it will do the updates for you. So really, yeah, this is basically how I build it. I'm going to let this go through and then once this is built, I'm going to test that in a VM. Or well, Discord still alive? Are we still active in here? We are. It was so quiet sometimes. Yeah, we're all muted, clicking there. That's all right, mate. That's all right. We're all talking together. <clears throat> I'm eating my tea, Simon. That's why I'm muted, dude. Yeah, chab. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just listening to you waffle on about what you're building, so it's all good. Yeah, no worries. I mean, there's so obviously... Like, so, like, all the customised artwork and stuff, do you just upload that to a GitHub page and then pull it into the ISO as it builds? No, it's inside here. Eru FS is the overlay. And inside yeah. user share backgrounds, all of yeah. the backgrounds are in there. Ah, right, okay, cool. And Calamari config for the net install is there so this is the yaml file which links up everything that i'm including and as a test i've put uh cinnamon in as a this is, i'm testing the desktop environment section now obviously there's no configurations for those yet because i haven't saved those out and created packages for them but you know this will install cinnamon and 
you will just get a, a standard cinnamon desktop at the end of the install. So all the audio apps, some development applications, graphic applications, everything that was installed on the ISO is now optional. You can do it through the installer. Um, so there, there isn't even a web browser on there. So you would definitely have to choose a web browser. Um, so I'll strip them it right down to the bare bones as much as I can. No, it's a great shout. <clears throat> then nobody can ever accuse you either of a bloat or b forcing your choice on somebody else. Which exactly, it's fantastic. I think yeah, it's a great ethos. And I, I want to take that a step further as well. Like once I've, because obviously when, and once I've got Cinnamon installed, I'm going to have to go into the virtual environment, configure it all up, and then save that config out and create a package out of it. Yeah. And then that will be available on the repo as a configuration package for Cinnamon if you want my look and so, feel. So you, so you could do that for all the other <laughs> desktops as well. So you could do an open box and i3 or whatever. You exactly, want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Rather than include those in the ISO already, because I don't want to... You know, if I go into Etsy scale, which is basically the skeleton folder for your home, if I went into config, I could put them all in here, but that's not a very good way of doing it. Um, you know, scale is an important location for when a new user is added to the system, it uses the files in here to generate the new user. So all the config that, you know, they take on the look and feel of salient as you can see it. Well, the thing is, Sal, and Eric Dubois has already got all these desktops for Arch Linux, so why don't you just point to his Git and just pull them down? Because <laughs> I don't want to use their configs. And they, they're doing it a, a different way to how I want to do it. I don't... Don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of respect for them. I think what they do is amazing, but yep. nothing should touch my home unless I want it. Yeah. Right, and when you pull updates down from Arco, you know, you're expected to type scale in the terminal, which copies everything from the scale folder and overwrites your home folder with whatever was there in the scale folder. And that, to me, is a big no-no. Yeah, yeah. Nothing touches my home unless yeah, it. it explicitly has to, like configuration files for an application or, you know, whatever. You're doing something yeah. yourself. And... Scale already has its use defined. It is a skeleton folder for when new users are created. Yeah. You know, that's, its, that's what it's for. And to use it in the way they're using it, I, I get it, I understand it, I just don't agree with it. Yeah. And that's not knocking Arco. I think that, you know, it's an amazing distro. Yeah. But I, th I think they could use a different way, a different location to do that job without touching scale. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is pulling the packages in now, obviously. It may be quite boring for you guys to see. That's really interesting. But I just wanted to share, you know, give a little bit of insight into what goes into using Arch ISO. Yeah. Because it's actually quite an easy system. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. I think the coronavirus has got me. <laughs> <laughs> so once this is finished building, you're going to see my CPUs max out in a minute. Yeah. Once this is done, this. What CPU you got, Solid? Is it an i9? No, no, it's the um, i7 8700K. Oh, good. Still a good processor. Though. Yeah, it's all right. Hey, look. He's the best looking guy in the Linux world. He's just popped in. Garth. The pinup of, pin of Spearmint Linux himself. How you diddly doing, Garth? <laughs> hmm. So where's Spearmint then, Garth? You've been promising it for, what, three years now? Spearmint sounds like a plan. Can you guys hear the other chaps in... Um, no, those... those those are normal, Johan. They're for devices that no longer exist, but they're still included in the Arch ISO tools for some reason. That, that wasn't me, Bob. 
Mr. Hopper. You what? take the fifth. No excuse, Garth, you lazy chab. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, Silent is sat there with three Swedish blondes on each knee. Yeah, exactly. Like what I was going to say, you can't get so. you can't get by on just good looks alone, mate. Doesn't cut it anymore. <laughs> a bit harsh, Johan. If I were you, mate, I'd concentrate on the gowder, you chub. <laughs> They're still hard to hear with the volumes at max. Gels, please. <laughs> hey, hey, up, Zeb. Hey, up, Zeb. How are you diddly doing, you chub? Turn me down a little bit, then. Well, I'm no longer diddly doing 115 on the M25, that's for sure. You take your freaking time, big boy, about 115. 115, that's walking pace. Mind you, it's the orbit of car park, isn't it, sir? And take your bloody time of it, Zeb. Chab. That's the best part of the racetrack between six and four, or between six and three on the M25. Never anybody. Wow. No, that's true enough, actually. No, I, never, I never, never get to go that, that far in. Let me turn you guys up on the Discord, because that's really weird. You do it through Discord itself. Good idea. Anyway, let's stop interrupting him, because I want him to fix his salient OS. Go on, mate. Keep going. Wow, he's such a chav. Fix it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Look, look, looks like uh, Mark can have some bad mood wig and stuff now for the change. There we go. Power that should be well now. <laughs> Alright, so this is now building the ISO, so if I drop out, it's because it's maxed out all the cores on my CPU at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Do you want to borrow a couple of cores? No, you can keep your A and B. Cover it where the sun don't shine. Bit That's harsh. Dull. Bit harsh, silent. Fair, fair. but a bit That's harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Intel next, please. <clears throat> Is that better, guys, the Discord chaps? Can you hear them better now? Right, no one's speak. <laughs> I honestly think it's just Discord is absolutely crap because when I was in my car listening to YouTube, I heard absolutely everybody perfectly. I come home, I've had to turn Discord up to like 200% to hear it. Yeah, it is. I agree with you, Zeb. And I said this to Ali earlier on that Discord is... It pisses me off because you have a really good edition of Discord and then they say, nope, we're going to give you a new one now and it's a pile of shite. Yeah, and then they break it. Yeah, it does your head in. Okay, that should be better now. Yeah. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Can I download it? Right, so that's the ISO built. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to move that to another location. Get rid of that in there. Over Trash out. Trash can. Over out. Back in there. And clean that folder out. Rebuild in a minute. Probably. Over, Over out. out. Yeah, don't forget, you got to stick it in the VM and try it first. Why is your power line black and white silent? It's fucking awful, man. You want a bit of colour in there? Very monochromistic. <laughs> <coughs> Did that ISO in? Did you mispronounce that, or are you still eating? No, I finished eating. I've just been on the uh, thesaurus, just for silent. Well, it didn't work because you still mispronounced it. I didn't. I pronounced it perfectly. Is that another day you know um, silent at a buyer? No, oh, he's a chub, isn't he? But well, the good news is, shop. doing it this way, the ISO is now almost a gig smaller. 1.72 gig on disk now. 2.6. Yeah. Don't care about the size. Does it work? Well, we're, about, we're just about to find out. <laughs> I mean, why would you do that, Garth, really? Why would you? Really? You got say the Intel S on another drive, but it took half in ages, and then you stuck gnome on it. Why? <laughs> Garth, you're a chap. What? What? You stuck 
just took no one's silence. I mean, that's just sacrilege. So these are now the options you've got. So you can do Linux kernel with no NVIDIA, and there's four groups of that. Standard Linux kernel, LTS, Hardened, and Zen. And you can do yeah. the same with the NVIDIA drivers. So I'm going to do the Zen kernel because I like it. Yeah. Desktop environments as a test. We're doing Cinnamon. So I'm going to do Cinnamon just as a test. Yeah. I'm going to stick a couple of packages in as we go through. Is the Zen um, kernel similar to Licorice or better? Same thing. Essentially the same thing. Just a different flavour. Yeah, just a different flavour. Is it as crap as the licorice kernel? Wow. Did you not enjoy it then? No, it's a piece of shit. Licorice kernel, a load of garbage. You got access to Libre offices. Use the error, EB, because it works better. Yeah, or my MX that I don't use. <laughs> oh, and, and, and talking of which, somebody oh, was having a go at Garth for yeah. taking Silent off and putting Gnome on. Yeah. Really, EB, you're going to go there? Yeah. What's wrong yeah. with that? What's wrong with that? What are you running now, EB? I am running Peppermint on the gaming laptop. I'm running Ubuntu 18.04 on the secondary desktop. With? 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 18.04 with? Uh, uh, Gnome. No, it's the Ubuntu Pop interface. It's not, it's, not, it's not Gnome. Um, I've got Chab OS on the main PC, and I've got Argo Linux on the potato. All right, then. Let's test this copy out. Who is it? <laughs> I think Zeb's just shat himself. <laughs> <laughs> Followed through in them tenor pads he's got on. That's got to be Although I've got to be honest, boys, I'm very seriously considering putting Arca Linux open box on the main PC. <sighs> here we go again. What was it? What? Oh, I'm here till 2023. Nothing's oh, ever going to go. change. <laughs> oh, we got to drag it out, ain't we? Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, we got to drag get the wheelbarrow out. You Let's are drag such it a fucking chab. Load of chubs. 2023, nothing else is touching this machine. I swear down never and ever again. I swear. He wakes up the next morning. I know, I'm going to install this. Yeah, well, no, I'm really enjoying our Arco open box. It's how open box should be. It's fantastic. It's just a shame every other open box distro can't learn yeah. from it. Oh, it's it? chub. Yeah, 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 yeah. Has he got the um, tint panels sorted out? Uh, do you remember the old Marbox? Used to be a lovely open box version as well. Yeah, he did, but the new Marbox is pants. Yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is, is the open box that Eric provides, is it as good as the old Marbox? Yes, I think so. Oh, it's better. I think it's better. I think it's how open box should be. Hey, up, Alan Pope. Nice to see you, dude. Uh, hey, no, there, Alan. I'm not on the wind blows. I hope you and the family are well, my friend. Nice to see you. Mr. Pope. Not this hour, anyway, Alan. Welcome to the stream. Oh, here he, hey, hey, says the guy with 400 distros on one hard drive. Really? Really? <laughs> Chub. <clears throat> right, so obviously your install time is now going to go up because now it's putting all of those packages from the repos. Yeah, that's one thing I've wanted to ask you for ages. Is there no way of speeding up the decompressing of the squash files that's already Since... happened because arch has recently changed over to the z standard compression right so yeah. e each pa package <clears throat> under their tests yeah you'll see a 0 0.8 percent size increase in the package but you get a 1300 percent decompression speed increase yeah so now this actually installs really really quick when it gets oh. up to this section now where it says install packages, and by the way, this is a regression in Calamari, which I've addressed with Adrian on the Calamari team, and they're looking yep. into this because this module should be saying installing a number out of however num many number of packages, and it's not, yep. it's not reporting properly here. And this is what has been given users a bit of consternation, thinking that the installer's frozen when it hasn't. So now this... Your install experience now, because there's an online repo and it's pulling all the packages I selected in the packages selection from online, is down to your hardware and internet speed. 
Yeah. So your experience is going to vary now. Awesome. Um, Alan, just I was going to give you a really nice compliment, dude, and say I was really enjoying your content that you're producing. Super, super stuff. But if you're just going to encourage Zeb, you can do one. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough, isn't it? Um, one other question for you, Silent. I have a very mixed experience with calamaris, especially when it comes to formatting and petitioning drives. Yep. So I assume that's an issue with calamaris because it's across different distros that use that installer? It depends on how you've partitioned your drive. If calamari can't determine the previous partition type and the way it had been partitioned, it may fail. That is, This is a known issue, and they're working very hard to resolve that. And they've this particular build, they've done a lot to improve that. The simplest way is just to open up gparted and partition your drives manually yeah yeah i was going to say if you're booting in uefi and you've yeah. loaded up a legacy partition table it's going to confuse calamari yeah right yeah. if you and if you've booted in legacy mode and you're trying to install to a gpt partition it's going to confuse calamari so you're going to have to manually partition those yeah drives. so 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 the simple answer is just prepare your petitions manually before you begin the installer and you're good to go in you yeah, but I mean, if you're, you know, if you stick to a certain methodology, which I do, I always have the same layout most of the time on real metal. Yeah, I never have that problem because I always stick to the same format. Yeah. Uh, so you know, nine times out of ten, I have always have a good um, in install experience because I never change, I never vary from that. It works yep. for me. But as you can see, I mean, the install has gone up considerably. When this was. When the packages were included on the ISO, you're looking at just under four minutes to install, and now we're looking at nearly seven, eight minutes, and we still yeah, haven't yeah. finished yet. Yeah. So that's the only downside to net installs, is that your yeah, no. install yeah, experience yeah. will exponentially go up in time. Yeah, because you've well, got look, your packages. Well, luckily, it's one I've anyway for a lot of people, isn't it, Mark? You yes. Install. You yes, install once in the rest of the time. You don't need to do it again until whatever. Yeah, and now... You know what I mean? The benefit of doing it this way is because there is now a repo. If I do back update, you'll see that there's. Um, oh, I might have taken it out of here actually. No, there you go. Salient OS repo is live. Which this ISO will be using. There we go. Bootloader's going in. Yes, Ferrin, that is true. Oh, right, okay. It's quite a small repo, though. I have go. to say... So the install's while, done. Just, just, just while Alan's in the stream, I have to say, Ubuntu 20.04, it's not only stunning, it's absolutely superb. It really is. Great distro. Right, let's take this chubby ISO out and reboot. Yeah, well, it's better time they sorted that out as well. Well, it just... You, th you think of oh, what they're doing, though, right? That's a naughty boy, it's there. Just a man oh, I comment to myself. You think of what they're doing? It's a, it's a distro agnostic cross-platform installer, which is very, very hard to do. It's non-trivial. Yeah. So if we go into the um, Cinnamon one, to prove that Cinnamon did get installed. So obviously, at this stage... There's still elements of uh, XFCE in, so I need to work out that side of it to remove XFCE. So whichever DE you choose, it's going to have to remove what was the underlying delivery system. Yeah. But as you can see, we're on Cinnamon now. Yeah, yeah, it's up. It looks good. So if I come out of there... No, not that much. Log out. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Leveticus... Ubuntu 20, the original Ubuntu 20.04s blew me away, mate. I think it's going to be the distro of 2020. It's just awesome. And the theming and, you know, the new Yaru icon sets and apps are absolutely gorgeous. No need to go hunting around for anything else. Just use it out of the box. It's The team's done a terrific job. They really, really have. In fact, I could use that as a daily quite easily, you know, until at least 2025. No problem at all. I was saying that, I see. Yeah, right. <laughs> Old Mutley's on the street. So I'll just issue a pack update. Make sure we're up to date. 
<laughs> Thanks, Alan. No need, dude. It's that good. It should be me posting the check to Canonical. It's awesome. Just update the mirrors there and then do a full system up. Yeah, do you know what, Garth? I agree with you. I absolutely hate cinnamon. <coughs> I really do. Hate it with a vengeance. Cinnamon's but that's right. me personally. Well, I've never had a good good streaming experience with it. Okay, let's have a... Let's go back never. Here. I don't want to show I know, You know, I would have loved to use Ferran OS Classic as a daily driver. I'd love to, but again, I can never, ever get a nice experience with the thing. Does your head in. First thing I do in that is turn off all the stupid animations. You need, You know, you don't need any of that. Yeah, no, the desktop itself I like. Solid. I love the way you've got your hot corners and all that. It's fantastic. You try streaming with it. It's a pain in the arse. You get a bit of screen tearing here, there. This don't work. You get flickering. Just does my head in. I don't get any of that. All my earlier videos were done in Linux Mint Tara. Wow. Tara, Tara. Was that the Australian release? <laughs> Linux Mint Tara. <laughs> all right, let's theme this thing up a little bit. Yeah, the new one, Ferran, is fine. But it's the Ferran OS Classic I wanted. I just wish you'd have built it off of Ubuntu and not Linux Mint. But look, that's what it Lamer, is. Lamer, you'll have to come back in 2025, mate, when he's finished with Ubuntu to ask that question. Oh, God, really? Honestly, you lot. You're giving Zeb free upgrades on his size 28 Doc Martins, as it is. Not Ark. Cougar. No, Silent, I'm sorry, can I interrupt you there? You got Ferrin in the chat, so can you please choose a poo brown folder colour? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I'd wait, Andrew. Yeah. I'd wait to folder colours. Oh, a little thing there. Tick icon. Yeah, they are, Craig. You're right about that. I'm their number one target on their most wanted list. That's better. Anyway, I had some news that nearly gave me a heart attack this morning. Look in the uh, YouTube. What was the news? Look in the YouTube chat. I'm looking in the YouTube chat. Where I, am, I can't see it. I can't see your post there. Oh, there it Thank is. Thank you. Switch to your to now. Start at 1,000. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, is that this Makulu oh, stuff? Who do you think that came from? I, I like, I fell off my chair at four o'clock this morning reading that. So he yeah, read, okay. he read up and realised he'd done it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So this is after you banging on about it the other night on a stream. He must have watched the stream and thought, okay, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. maybe he's got a point. <laughs> I'd have been telling him for two years. Yeah. He finally took notice. Well, that's good. I've got to be honest with you, Garth. I was very impressed with the Lindos version, the new Lindos. It's super. It's a great little OS. What do we want? Although I do wonder how much of that is down to the fact that he's built and based it off of Ubuntu and not Debian. I don't think you go wrong with the Ubuntu base. Terrific. Lindos, the, the last one, I'm pretty sure he's still on Debian. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it was, and it was a bit hit and miss. But the new one that's based off Ubuntu is terrific. Now, the one that you're saying that's just been completed just recently, that's still Debian-based on no, almost it's not. 100. It's, it's, no, you're wrong. It's Ubuntu. The latest Lindos, the 2021, is built and based off of Ubuntu, which is terrific. And you... My first UID is 500, so, nah. <clears throat> um. My console. Tick. Yeah. That's right, Garth. But as I, say, I think it's more down to Ubuntu than Makulu, because Ubuntu is just a solid base, isn't it? You can't go wrong. 
Blimey, that's the second time in a day I've nearly fallen off my chair. EB was right about something. Yeah, wow. so there it you happens. go. So I've it got happens. two. Yeah, I've got two points for you to note, Zeb. Number one, have a nice large slice of humble pie, <laughs> and number two, have a really big warm mug of shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> EB2, Zebedee Boss, nil. Wow. Back of the net. Even a broken clock's right twice. Uh, <laughs> so you've just used your he, he can't leave it, can he? He's got to have a bit back in it. Chab. Oh, Joe, don't encourage him, for God's sake. Somebody's got the YouTube monitor on, by the way. Yep, they have. Shabs. Yeah, they ain't me. It's got to be Zeb. He ain't got a clue where Pulse is concerned, does he? Let's be frank. Well, my YouTube's muted. There we have it. There's a cinnamon install done. All configured. Beautiful. Looks really, really nice. Quick menu. Log out. Log in out. Obviously, there's no i3 on this particular build. Yeah. I, all I, that I do think you need to get yourself a new, really high definition quality wallpaper, though. Something with a really nice, digitally generated, suspicious bush on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> just a thought. The closest I've got. <laughs> <laughs> is that I think, one? A I, think, I think there's a couple of Russian websites you might want to have a look at. <laughs> <and just laughs> say, yeah. I happen to like that one. Yeah, that's a good shout, Ferran. But that's just me personally. That's just a personal opinion, and personal opinions are like bum holes. Everybody's got one, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. It's all personal choice at the end of the day, anyway. Yeah, of course it is. No, not at all, Craig. I've always been that dude. <laughs> Sand. Oh, Farron, you really need some. So you you need to book in somewhere, dude. You really do. <laughs> He's well, got hentai on the brain. It's he all really that testosterone has. building up. He's got to do yeah, something with it. Because he's an adult now, it's all going to his head. This hentai thing. Log out. I don't know about snaggle puss, Craig, more like bag puss. <laughs> yeah, you blame me, Ferran. You're already That's corrupted, Ferran. It just yeah. took EB to bring it out of you. Yeah, you just needed to come out the closet, dude. We all knew that anime was just a front for hentai, dude. Just saying. Wow. There are, there's a, there's a bit of a meme for you. Passing the buck as usual. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's a success, people. That's a successful build. Is that you without the makeup and the polyfiller on, Silent? It just... is, yeah. <laughs> it is. As I said before, face for radio. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I'm jealous of is you've still actually got hair. <laughs> right. Dude. So this is um this is a little script I made up just to make my life easier. So I can automatically name the distro, give it the date yep. and the date. It automatically changes the calamari branding description file by passing this information into that file. Yeah. Branding up version and everything. Copies it into the distro's user share calamari branding. Name obviously, 
yep. version of files. So I don't have just, to keep doing it. To, just a point, Silent. You might want to send Learn Linux a copy of that script because in his next video, he can clean it up and show you how it should be written. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> Well, basically what it does, it updates LSB, LSB release, OS release, and a few other files automatically, so I don't have to do it manually. Yeah. So. Thank, thank you, Michael. At last, somebody speaks the truth. It's, it's out of the closet now, Farron, so you may as well just accept it, dude. All it says has been updated. Go into the build file. All that information. Looks overwrites great. all of that and what it also does it ignores ignores anything pop tug in the string so these don't get overwritten people can get over because they share oh, the same while, while you've got that um bash script up can you fix the fact that when you put in a line of script that's more than two lines long the end the second line appears on top of the first one it does it does yeah i'm glad you agree <laughs> I've not seen that, to be honest, then. Would you like me to record it for you? Yes, please. I'd like to as see As soon that. as you put the ISO up and I reinstall it, I'll show you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you walked right into that one, son. Sorry. Love it. Well, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I'll do with this one. I'll upload this one to my... I'll, I'll make it available online for you, Zeb, so you can try it out. Yeah, yeah, will do. And then I'll see if it's still doing it. I'm just going to build it again now. Got a fresh build. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Farron's thrown his dummy out of yeah, the place. Yeah, I, I, wait, I was waiting for the toys to come out. You see, Farron's all right while he's giving it and giving it the youth and the meme and all the rest. As soon as somebody gives a bit back, you know what I mean? The old dummy comes get spat out. Here we go. I can just see him now sat at home thumping his desk going, I fucking don't <laughs> like yeah. hentai, I've Sp told him. Yeah, <laughs> spitting feathers at his screen in his East Anglian accent. I'm going to have to have a word with English, Bob, because this hentai thing, it's getting huge. <laughs> you mean spitting white panties at the screen? <laughs> Chucking family bags of Skittles at it. Catapulting That's it. them. I've had enough. Yeah, I've had enough. Catapulting Skittles at his screen. Yeah. Right. I'm going to have a word with that, EB. I'm going to have to sort it right out. Can't take it anymore. Wow, Ferran. Ooh, Skittles. I've got some in my jaw. Hang on. <laughs> wow. That was loud. <coughs> What was that? Farron shaking his family bag of Skittles? <laughs> <coughs> hey, Mitchell, nice to see you, dude. Hey there, Mitchell. Wow, Farron. Oh, he's, he's getting right off his trolley. Don't Someone's going to knock you off of that pedal stool one day, mate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love how he puts while waiting for dinner to cook, really. Yeah. Chab. Depends how long the microwave takes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. That ready meal for one is just waiting for the ping. <laughs> what do you mean, JD? Um, a problem determining 4K. What's going wrong that you don't like on KDE K? Zeb, just a point, mate. You keep releasing that push to talk button way too soon and it's cutting you off in mid sentence. Sort your pulse out. That's actually a question, <laughs> Zeb, from That's JD. not pulse audio. That's just a finger. Yeah, yeah. That's about it's right. Gate. Isn't it? His gate's too small. You can't fit through it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That'll be that Chinese four quid keyboard. <laughs> 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 Cracking. Charity keys. Very nice. He paid a, four quid, he was ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, man. 
cost him cost him four quid for the keyboard and thirty eight quid import duty. <laughs> if I Bargain. remember rightly, JD, you also have the option of Kwin low latency. Yeah, Kwin low latency, which is uh, a rewrite of the Kwin compositor to reduce stutter and so that's available, but you would have to compile that from GitHub, as far as I'm aware. Uh, 20 JD, though. Have you determined so um, latency and stutter no, no, from his question? Because he hasn't mentioned anything else. Uh, he's saying, does KD, it's a question. Does KD no, and KWIN no, have a problem no, determining 4K TV? It shouldn't have. No, no. Well, the, the plasmas I've tried on my son's 4K work absolutely well no yeah. problems whatsoever yeah and it works perfectly well on the three four k's i've got here oh yeah all, all window display managers now whatever display DEs, window managers does go to 4k quite easily what are you, what are you I hate the fact that kwin goes up to about 120 dpi by default for the font and it's like whoa fisher price lives what are yeah, you running many. jd you running KDE Neon? What are you running? Wendy hugs. Oh Wendy my! Oh my God! Linux's most gorgeous pinup has just come into the stream. How are you, Wendy? How's the family? Lovely to That's see it. you. That's it. I'm off, Later, boys. Oh, it, it, hey, hey, <laughs> here, hey! Terrible thing, Envy. You know what I mean? Envy. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the stream, Wendy. Love, all, always mm -hmm. lovely to see our bendy wendy in the stream she never comes on mine you know I don't, oh, I can, don't blame her <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying no, do I. no do just I. saying oh amazing new lady mind you i had rose turn up last time didn't i yeah you did have dozy rose didn't you okay Jay, yeah. i'll have a look into that oh that's good to wear wend if you feel like it, you can <laughs> open up a ticket on the SourceForge page, go to the tickets, open the ticket, and I'll look at it there. And describe everything you can. That way I can keep track of it, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, Plasma shouldn't have any issues on a 4K. Thank you. No, it's yeah, strange. JD, you know, describe as much as you can. Like, I'm sitting here, it's a beautiful day, the wind's blowing, the sky's <laughs> blue. <laughs> Silent will appreciate all that. Absolutely. <laughs> Wend, really? Me? No. Wendy, you should know by now. Come on, Chick. <laughs> I was very poorly yesterday. Today, I'm feeling much, much better. Poor old Ali's already had both barrels on his stream, isn't he? Al? You've had to suffer it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a fun stream, though, wasn't it? Come on. That Great fun. 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 Loved it to bits, man. Great fun. And now we're just Brad, a bit like the, we're yeah. just a bit like the coronavirus. We're infecting silent stream now. <laughs> Absolutely. Because, you know, I did say I was going to... Well, maybe coffee, like. I just haven't done nothing to eat. I'll do something about no, you shouldn't, our Bendy Wendy. You shouldn't, chicken. <clears throat> I don't know why they still keep this firmware. So old. I removed it. No, no, Zeb's right, Ferran. No, it does default to 150% if you're okay. It's just an automatic thing it does. Same as Windows does. Windows does exactly the same. Yeah, but Windows, to be fair to it, does allow you to change the DPI afterwards. Yeah, so does, um, so does KDI. You just go in and put the fonts back to 96. Done. Next. Yeah. yeah. Job done. But I thought I bought a 4K monitor because I want to see lots on the screen. I didn't buy a 4K monitor to display me 1440p. Thank you very much. I know it has Yeah, that's the thing that gets me as well. People are buying these big, massive displays for it, and it looks like it's in 80 to me because of all the massive side icons and all that. What but are you, you doing that for? You'd think by now they'd remove that hardware because you're looking at, what, 20-year-old hardware with those devices? No point in it being in there. 
Johan, Wendy's, Wendy's book that she can't keep out of is called Fifty Shades of Grey. Now, the only problem with it is it's not a book about creating monochromatic wallpapers. But when we'll get to that. <laughs> Especially the middle pages, just saying they might stick together a bit. Would that <laughs> book, <laughs> when, <laughs> Wendy, would that book happen to be EB does Peppermint Ubuntu Windows... Um, <laughs> Mint, Ferron, Windows, infinitum. Peppermint, Gnome, Peppermint, Cinnamon, Peppermint, <laughs> Windows, Peppermint, etc., etc. Until 2023. Yeah, there seems to be a little bit of a running theme here somewhere. There's a pattern emerging. Oh, there's a question, yeah. Well, that's been there for ages, Goth. Crazy wild again. But it's not an error. Warning, more than anything. There are some errors that you see here. The command failed to execute correctly. That's because it's running in a shiru and it won't. It's not actually an error per se. It doesn't affect the ISO in any. Just standard output when you're creating. You got it in one, Wendy. What what Mark means is these errors, lot they don't affect the ISO, lot so don't worry about them. In fact, and in fact, if you were to take the default relaying, I'd take that arch ISO relaying. That one. <laughs> He's boring. I'm saying nothing. Wind. It's a bit harsh. I know. Fair, and... fair but a bit harsh. <laughs> What have you seen all the Fifty Shades of Grey films, Wend? Right, that ice is built. Move that away. <laughs> the other thing you never seem to ever get, Silent, whenever I boot one of your ISOs, is you never seem to get this waiting for script to execute thing, which twists my melon all the while. I never is get that it. hardware related? It must be, yeah, because I never get it on my hardware. Ever. Yeah. Just my editing. Now I've removed that. Let's clean that out. These two folders disappear now. Work them out. Shirut. They're gone. Shirut. But now we've got a clean build environment. Let's do this one. Oh, Wendy, you don't know what you're missing. I tell you, chick. Grab hubby, go get yourself a nice large popcorn and enjoy. Um, this one, I need to change something here. I don't want to see both out, but... Hey up, Dobby, how you diddly doing? You want to see if a boast? Just give it to EB for a week. Oh, is, is yeah, there's a still... boast. I'm wanting to cut your wrist for a boast. <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good film, actually, Wend. I enjoyed that with Clint that Eastwood. Right. Yeah, it's a good film. I like the Deadpool. Now, this particular version, this standard reeling, this is only going to build a standard arch ISO. The end of this will be a bog standard arch ISO as you get it from them. Only obviously this will be up to date. With which window manager? None. Console login. So that's, Console only. Yeah. Yep, that will be a raw arch ISO as you get it from the arch guys and free for you to do with whatever you. But this is the skeleton that you start off with, and yep. you add the packages you want, etc. This Are you completely cool. insane, Johan? Well, he's getting there. He's been with us for too long. No way, Johan. The books are far better than the films. 50 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. times better than the films. Good grief, man. Go back and read them again properly. <laughs> yeah, Deadpool's hilarious, Farron. And extremely wrong on so many levels. That's why. It, that's why it's funny. But it depends on your persuasion, Silent. Just say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only doing this one for demonstration purposes. 
I, I can answer that question, Wendy. It's very simple. Every book is always better than every film. For the simple reason, the book allows you to introduce your own imagination into it whilst consuming it. The film you served up as somebody else envisages it. But before EB completely bores us to death with his rhetoric, it's the Lord of the Rings books, Wendy, by Tolkien. Yeah, excellent books. The thing is about films, they can only put so much in eight into the film. But to be yeah. fair to Peter Jackson, I think he did capture the vision of it. Like, how I imagined the characters when I read it are pretty close to what he rendered them like. So I think he actually got the look and feel of it. It's just that you know, the film version is quite vapid <clears throat> really compared to the book. Series of books. So, so this is what I do on a daily basis, people. So welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. As well as playing. I'm Jim Rees going to my head, then you bastards. That's just wrong. I shouldn't have Jim Rees in my head at any time. Similarity is awesome. What's awesome? The Silmarillion. Oh, Silmarillion, yeah. Which is like prequel to all of it, really. No, yeah, but the books are always better than the film. Typically, yeah, constraints of the movie industry. It's kind you of know. <laughs> Unless it's a Hindi film, you know what I mean? Eight hours long, and then comes back a whole book in there. Wow. You've but, almost yeah. redeemed yourself with that comment, Johan. <laughs> yeah. Almost, but yeah. not quite. George Young's Redemption. Nah. Oh, that was the right pile of chaff, that were. Well, didn't, uh, you under, didn't you understand it, E.B.? <laughs> wasn't was that Morgan Freeman? What was, what was all that about? What a load of tat that was, I tell you. Amazing. George Young's Redemption. Good movie. Wasn't that bad? Yeah. Simon Not Pegg a patch on funny. Power Rangers, the movie. You know what I'm just saying? <laughs> <laughs> Six hundred and ninety-one. The only reason you like the Power Rangers maybe is because you fancy the White Power Ranger. Standard arch ISO there now. Yeah, that's what it is. You fancy the White Power Ranger? What, so, Tommy? You, you don't even you don't even know who the Power Rangers are, do you, Ali? Let's be honest. You've no, only that's just not what you, Power Rangers. I mean, yeah, anyway. let's. Let's be honest, you've only just got electricity there on the Isle of Chubbs, didn't you? Let's be honest. <laughs> That's some watch Power Rangers. So I think Damon was about four. Man, he's yeah. 25 this year. What's going on? I used to love the Power Rangers, watching it with my sons. Absolutely uh, brilliant. Fun. I used to take them to the cinemas. To they got completely the pissed off week after week, but EB enjoyed himself. Yeah, I loved it. And I, used <laughs> to get, I, I used to get up at sort of quarter to seven every Saturday morning to watch the Poddington Peas. Fantastic kids' cartoon. They ate it. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> just for do you TR need a do you need a tissue, Garth? Just for TRG. I'm just going to boot the ISO up again so you can see where it's going now. So pretty much everything you requested, I've listened to. Yeah, absolutely, Wend. I used to love it. It's great. And my favourite oh, yeah. one was Power Rangers the movie with Ivan Ooze, and a bit like Zeb, if you ooze, you lose. <laughs> Uh, we knew that was coming out. Yeah. What, what, one of my favourite movies is still Blade Runner. Oh, you know? Ferran, the younger me. Anybody think he was 40? Yeah, I know. I, he gives it large, doesn't he? Eh? The younger me. You watching? Oh. Young me. Ferran's just been around. We'll, we'll you let you know life. when you come out of young Ferran. <laughs> Ferran's been around longer than he's been alive. Are you watching TRG? How minimal this is now. TRG. Nothing in here. What, the ISO or the chat? <laughs> yeah, that is it. So now if we go install, you get the choice. Someone's monitoring again. It's Zeb, you know who it is. It's Zeb the Chab. He hasn't got a dunny when it comes to audio. <laughs> so now you've got a choice of kernels. 
choice of nvidia yeah, but with does this actually work yeah look if i do this one just to prove it right because on the manjaro one i think it was it don't work was NVIDIA. it manjaro no it was arco on the arco linux one this don't work NVIDIA. whatever you select doesn't install it just ignores you right let's go through it again then. well i've got two installs of arco linux one with a deep in desktops and one with a normal arco and every single option works so i don't know well, what you're talking about well it didn't for me just saying Funny, how many times have we heard that on your streams? Well, I can, only, I can only tell you what my experience is, can't I? Simple as that. You know, I mean, your installs are all so perfect, you can't even sort your bloody audio out. <laughs> now it's EB's turn to get the ump. Oh, hey, God, I'll, yeah. hey, I'll never get the ump with you. You can't get up early in the morning enough to get me the ump. Don't worry about that. Okay, what's the difference between the fresh and still packages of LibreOffice? And just for shits and giggles, I'm going to install VirtualBox in a virtual box. LibreOffice Fresh is the latest and greatest. LibreOffice Still is like an LTS version. All right, cool. Because I only deal with the latest and greatest. I don't deal with this. Yeah. Oh, then what are you doing on that? Um, <laughs> no, I knew that was coming. <laughs> he's, I tell you what, he's, I reckon he's had a bag of and skittles tonight. I think he's OD'd on them. Yeah. Chab. Sonny so, kicks it. There we go. Let's do a fresh install. Obviously, this Football. is going to take longer now because of uh, online Yo, repo. what is creepy pasta? What is that? I have no idea what creepy pasta is. Don't know. Is it pasta that creeps along? I don't know. I'm yeah, sure Farron just makes his shit up in his sleep. I swear to God. Yeah, he's, when, I'll tell you Wendy, what. I'll be honest with you. I love Sonic the Hedgehog on a Mega Drive. I am just saying. I'll play that again and again. <laughs> oh, that, that would explain the, explain the green bits then in Farron's teeth. Right, okay. Cheers, Bob. <laughs> so as you can see, the percentage, I mean, the, the operating system install itself is very quick. Yeah, that's flying up. Yeah. Well, oh, well. You, you say that, but I've seen quicker. Just saying. Yeah, like mine. Mind you, like it took its time to get to Z standard. I've been on Z standard for two and a half years. Like you know, what I mean, just saying. Well, that's not down to me. That's down to Arch. Oh no, it is. That's I mean, I've, I've, I've got, got to be honest. Everybody goes on about just how quick Gen Two is. And yet, I'm sorry, I, I would yeah, say yeah. Nutix murders it every day of the week. Nutix, oh, I've, never Nutix seen, great, I've never seen a system as fast as Nutix. Yeah, it's but so quick. You know, you're talking about yeah, like, fringe distros that people won't use as a daily driver. You know, you're not, you're not going to be streaming, you're not going to be doing your AAA titles, you're not going to be doing any of that on these fringe distros. Simple as that. Not without an awful lot of work. Well, no, I mean, I disagree with you there, Solent, because there is Ooh. one guy in eastern Tibet now. <laughs> <laughs> he meditated for 20 years and he got the answer. And then, he... yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meditation happening in Tibet. Oh, yeah, thanks, Craig. You're just encouraging him now, really. Ain't that the truth, Alan? <laughs> Absolutely. Except Serge, of course. He's always got time. No, wrong with these fringe distros. Yeah, that's um, a bit like that Ubuntu one, isn't it, Alan? That fringe distro. <laughs> <laughs> you do realise you're going to suffer Alan's wrath now. Yeah, you? he's going to ban me from his channel now. <laughs> no, Canonical are just going to ban you off the earth now. Yeah, no longer will you be able to download Ubuntu, Mark. Canonical oh, are going to issue a contract for silent Hang rock. on, Ali. I don't see the problem with that. Oh. Me either. Me, but mate, to be honest, <laughs> Ben would <Porter> like. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that is true, Alan. And I, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just having a laugh with you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> TRG. Hey, it's you again. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, don't get me started, Farron. You know I hate snaps and flat packs and all that rubbish. 
ban Hammer. I'd, why do you call them rubbish, Silent? They're the future. They're platform independent app installations. Platform why? independent if you've got system done. Yeah, why Literally would you not have Apple. system? Why would you run anything else, Ali? Get a clue and compile let, from let source. A, let, I'll tell you, one of these days I'm going to write a list down for you. I swear to God. Well, you, well it's, it's crystal clear then, Ali. You're not a World of Warships player. Uh, except, uh, I don't know if you noticed on my desktop that you saw the World of Warships bloody icon there, eh? I wonder why that's sitting there. Yeah, I know, but you had to install System D to get it running, dude. I'm just saying. Because your OS is still <laughs> trying to work out, can it delete actually, it or not? <laughs> actually, it runs just fine. Well, a bit stuttery. Yeah, a, a bit stuttery is an understatement, isn't it? Let's be honest. Oh, yeah, I'm on Intel 3000 graphics. Right? What's oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's, let's not, blame not, the not hardware. All of, not, not all of us run 1050 Ti. Hey, hey, hey. Not the chub OS that you're running. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, I think Snaps, flat packs, App Images, I think they have their place. I think they can be useful to get no, people no, out of no, the situation. Right, I mean, no, I just, I, I'll be honest, but, I do use nothing. Hang on. Lane the Linux, um, Ferran hmm. OS can tell you how to do that one. He told me the other day when I was on your... Zeb, you're over-modulating like crazy, man. If Lama, if you're talking you about go, Ubuntu, better. then yes. you just need to install GNOME Tweaks and you can remove them via that. No, you can't. Yes, you can. I've done no, it. Oh, Hello? Anybody home? No, you can't. On 2004, it doesn't work. Ferran, tell him what he has to install. So you have to turn off all the desktop icons to get rid of the trash can off the desktop. Come on, that's luck. That's got to be a known thing. No, you, you just like have to run control. the desktop icons extension. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And then you can tick, and tick what you want and what you don't want. Things that should be in the desktop should be in the desktop, man. That's one of them. That shouldn't need an extension. Well, tell Gnome. It's not Ubuntu's fault. Tell Gnome. No. Nope. No, I said that. I just said that two seconds ago. I said it's not your bunch of folks. It's a gnome thing. Put it back, wind. Again, we're waiting for this to finish installing because no, it's now... definitely not a new bunch of problem. Oh, look at that, Zeb. Would you like to read Ferrin's answer back? The Lama Linux on desktop icons in gnome tweaks. That's three nil. You bunch of chubs. Okay, would you like me to install so Ubuntu what, what, so, and show so, you it not oh, working, you so, so Why don't you have a lovely, nice, warm cup of shut the hell up? <laughs> Chab. To quote a certain critique <laughs> a moment ago, <laughs> I can can't only leave it, speak can for what I find. Yeah, hey, he can't leave it, can he? Hey. And I probably got proof in a chat earlier on where Ferran told me to, to install that extension because the cog don't work. Uh, well. So, oh, dear. OBS is pretty damned efficient. It's using 1.8% CPU at 60 frames a second. It's not bad, is it? That's really good. That. And what's the stream quality like? Is it all right? Yeah, yeah really good. Fine. Really good. I'm impressed with it. It's that. not as good as Al is, I'm just saying, but it's really good. Well, nothing touches well, that. Well, what is, to be honest, you know what? What is going to be as good as mine? Right. Uh, All I done. mean, consider I'm using literally a 56k upload speed, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not bad. Cough, cough. EB? Bye, old Joe. Are, are you reading YouTube chat? No. Try old Joe. You take care. Big hugs. Take care, Andrew. Well, Yeah, that's true. The silence from EB is so fitting. No, the word you're looking for there is deafening, you chub. <laughs> He's a chub, isn't he? Yeah, that's because that's you obviously had help setting your uh, OBS up silent, just saying. <laughs> well, I already had it set up, you chub. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know, did you? You needed EB's. So there we go. It, you, know. you can see all the things I chose at install time are all installed. Everything's yeah. there. Can you at can the you can... OS, the extension you told me in to install works? 
It's Gnome Tweaks. And the NVIDIA that, says. Oh, just ignore him, Farron. You know what he's like. He needs to change his tenor pad. <laughs> so let's do a pseudo reflect UK just to get the mirrors from me. Anyone else, you would just do a pseudo reflect and that would just grab worldwide mirrors closest to your location. Unless you're in the UK, then you can do pseudo reflect UK. Which is what I've just done. I'm just explaining that. And then yep. I'll do a CLS because I'm old school. Back update. Refresh the mirrors. You can see now. Hold well, I'm in the audio. I didn't touch the watching the video a bit up Now we have a salient OS repo, which is now live on the GitHub. Then we do a pack upgrade. And there's nothing to do. Everything's up. Actually, you put. So this is the direction I want to take Salient now to make it easier for people to choose what they want in their distro at install time. Very cool. It's working beautifully. Obviously, so nice. Nvidia is not desktops and whatever to it. Eventually, yeah, that will come eventually. But I'll... but is but is there any point in doing that? Silent shouldn't shouldn't people have the choice to install whatever desktop they want? That's what I just said. Yeah, but I'm saying if Silent goes and creates a desktop like Cinnamon and does it how he... That's how he wants it. No, I'm going to... Not necessarily how everybody else wants it. I'm thinking you know if I, mean? I add those different desktops, I think I might just do them vanilla and let people configure them for themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or perhaps do some oh. some kind of Git repo and say, look, this is how I like it. If you want it like this, then just pull all the config files down off the Git. Other than that, you yeah, know, I mean, it's yourself. salient. Like, I don't, has... I don't think that makes a difference because they always change the theming and all that business themselves. To yeah, exactly. Well, they do, to be fair. Well, yeah, they do, to be fair. I mean, it has a branding now. So you notice the icons. These are like logos that have been created for it. So Calamari has it. The menu icon has it. <clears throat> and this is the default wallpaper. So if anything, those things would be carried across, if nothing else. And I'm using the Teller icon theme because I think it's a gorgeous icon thing. You, you yep. should get a nice Salient to a wallpaper. Or is it Cougar? Maybe. I can't remember if it's Cougar or not. No, it's Teller, Teller Dark. They're really, really nice icon. And the Cougar um, theme. Well, is... I'm sorry, Silent. If you're going to put a Cougar wallpaper on there, can you include a Hentor one for Farron as well? <laughs> 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 and can we have a Milf and a Gilf one as well? <laughs> That, that, that's for Steve Dosen Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, people. This is where Salient is at the moment. Um, it's looking good, actually, Mark. To be looks, honest. looks it's amazing, our Marky Mark. No, it looks it's brilliant. Good. It's shaved just under a gig off the size of the ISO. So now I'll be uploading like a 1.72 gig ISO instead of 2.6 and 2.8. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be good news for everyone. While still retaining all your gaming. Tweaks and other bits and pieces. None of that's awesome. been changed. All of that's still in there. And yep. for anyone who's interested, those are actually very easy to set up. The system D process you have to do in system conf, user conf, system, well, they're not the conf in the limits.conf. Yeah. Is where those elements are changed as per the wiki. We just increase the default limit no file and the default limit and proc. To the suggested values and yeah which is exactly what you did on that um video that you took down steve i really wish you'd put some of your old videos back up they were awesome mate oh bless you no yeah but they were fairness and obviously the um in the packages They've commented out all of the applications that were previously on the ISO. They're now all optional. So we've yep. got Wine Staging, Wine Tricks, Vulcan ICD Loader, Lib32 Vulcan ICD, Steam, Steam Native. They will always be in the ISO regardless. I mean, there's other tools in the background that you don't notice. So, you know, no. Salient can be used as a rescue live media as well. Enough tools you need to. Rescue assist quite easily. Yep. And as you can see, I've got provisioned for awesome WM and open box. 
that yep. are ready to roll, but they will I be said separate. Box, That's more. <laughs> and the other one, PXVK, Lutris, game mode, Lib32 game mode, uh, the Spear of Tools for VK D3D, which is new. This is the Valve version of that. So that should help. Yeah, I just wonder if all distros should be doing this now, a standard. Xbox drivers. Vin Lacey in the house, welcome. Uh, hey there, Vin. Downgrade is going to stay as well, because that gives you the ability to downgrade applications. They're all the same. So really, I mean, the delivery is down to whatever's in this file. This is the XFCE one. I mean, that yeah. can be changed for plasma, that can be changed for cinnamon. So I could do separate ISOs for those. Not a problem. Or I can just do it using the net install. Yeah. Which allows you to install a vanilla desktop. Maybe with configurations. But to think that through. But that's basically how it's done, people. Simply enough, isn't it, really? It's quite cool once you got the scripts done. Uh, yeah. It's just editing and job done. Yeah, it's very cool. A uh, quick question for Farron. When are you discontinuing Farron Classic? When it's end of life or before? No, when you been... and um, Sudo stop calling it shite. Oh, so 2036 then. <clears throat> Hello, Joe. Good to see you, bud. 404, it's not the page you are looking for. There you go, Don. You're not going to see much in there. That's just the template for the website. Hey, Joe, how are you diddly doing? I hope you and the family are well, buddy. And that's just the repo. That's the only things that are live at the moment. I wouldn't even bother with my dot files because that was taken. These, this was done at a time when I was using a method I found online based on my combination post using your home folder as a bare repository, which is a really amazing way of using GitHub. Because you can store all your dot files online that way. So if anyone's interested in that, you can follow these instructions. Host your keep oh, your dot okay. files safe on GitHub. But at the I moment, only the repo is live there. So salient itself, the build process at the moment is not going live like that. That's going to be something that's offline, immediate future. But it will eventually go online. I've also got that set up on GitLab as well. And that needs to be updated. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, awesome. I'm not quite sure what to do now. Could do a bit of gaming. <laughs> I I'm think it's sure that, That's a home of my streams. Okay, what do I do now? <laughs> few things out, I guess. Got a few games. Yeah, why not? I don't know how it's going to affect. So that's 2023 then, Farron. That's great news, dude. <coughs> no, that's good. Good to know. This. 2.1 gig, really? Probably quite a few people, Farron, because of the 32-bit option, mm -hmm. which is always nice to have in the armory. Yes, yeah, I think I still have to um, support my 32-bit from 2016. And there's a whole glut of 32-bit machines available on eBay for next to nothing, so people are buying them. I'm not going to do that now because it's got update. We call those people Warships. chads. 32-bit <laughs> machines. Yes, Joe, I am. Hang on a second. Think of a decent, half -dead, 64 -bit yeah, machine. I know, Farron. That's why I'm saying it's important you keep a 32-bit in the armoury until end of life. So to have a 32-bit for another three years, I think, would be a good move. If I generate... Oh, I, I killed off 32-bit in 2016, man. You know. Yeah, for <sighs> anyone who's interested, there's a permanent link there for an invite to my... Supporting... Um, that shouldn't expire. Supporting two, like, repos was a... Also. Yeah, well, I got to the point where it was almost three. I thought, this is silly. There's got to be a better way. So, 
There we go, I know where it's all. Ali is victorious. I thought Ali was going to have to do some jogging down and shut my mouth. Oh, no, don't do that to me. Oh, another one I need to re include. Okay, let's do it. Tom's it off seven? Yes, it is. Not bad. Oh, wow. Thanks for that, Alan. Really? 2028? That's awesome, dude. What, what's 20? Ubuntu 18.04 oh, right, 32 yeah. bit. That's awesome. Yeah, that's and cool. that's all because you can get those extra five years by creating yourself an Ubuntu One account and signing up for extended with support, which is free for up to three three PCs for one user. Well, that's all right. Wow, that's awesome. Can't complain over that, to be fair. Can't complain over that. So Pep's good until 2028, then? <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter because you're changing it next week because it's going to be gone in three years anyway. <laughs> Oh, God, I'll get it. Really? This is the bloke, filthy dual booter of Windows, yeah. I just want my phone to rub him up, blood. Harry Potter, another movie I quite like. <sighs> it's in. Oh. Kitty, oh bless. Kitty is GPU enabled terminal. Yeah, huh? Very cool indeed. Oh. That change. No cool retro terminal, sorry. Why the hell would I have that in there, Ali? Come on. <laughs> but it's cool. And it's retro. And it's a terminal. It, the, the hint's in the name. I'm surprised you've not got Sakura in there, Silent. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't like secure. What is so wrong with secure? I'd like to know what is wrong with secure. I'll tell Seriously. you off off stream. It's Ali. crap. <laughs> it ain't no. It works. It hasn't let me down ever. Okay, so in Sakura, go into your um, preferences and change the size of the screen on next. Week. You can't because you have to do it on the command line. Or edit and? the bloody file that runs it. Yep. Uh -huh. and? This is 2018, <laughs> 19, 20, is... not 19, 20. And your point is? Go on, anyway. I know it's on the pep, uh, Johan, and it's the first single thing I change every single time. There's the icon, delete secure, XFCE4 dash terminal. Next. Oh, don't ask him, Don. It's bloody Vim. Oh, excuse me a minute, peeps. I do. Ali, oh, mute, mute Ali silent. Yeah. He's muted. Oh, welcome. <laughs> Love it. There you go, Farron. Hello. 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 Well, hello. Hello, well, hello there. What ho? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only here so I get a high quality version of uh, Silent's voice. I oh, know, it's amazing. I You're very you welcome, Alan. Just for you, some <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Silence voice and nubbist voice are two of the coolest, richest voices on the planet. They're awesome. Be careful now that Alan's putting a bunch of videos out. He might dub your voice over it. So. The face like a crushed potato, but the voice of God. <laughs> Vince, bit harsh. Fair, but a bit harsh. Dorset tones the poker. Yes, Pokey's got a very good voice as well. <laughs> right, I'm just going to build this one, and that will be it then after this, and I'll upload this for Zebby to play with. Where do you um, host your ISOs, Silent? On SourceForge. 
But this one will it, be private for the moment because it's still in testing. Gotcha. And is it fairly straightforward to push stuff? I've, I don't think I've ever uploaded any. Yeah, it's so easy. You can either use their um, SH SFTP script or you could just use FileZilla, get through FileZilla. Oh, nice. Which is what you choose to use because I like GUI. And I know this side of it is uh, boring stream, I guess. This is it. This is how it's all done. No, it's cool. I think it's a good idea to have these kind of streams where you show how the sausage is made. I think people appreciate it. Yeah. And it's not just like, like using refactor tool, going into an ISO, changing it, re-spinning it out, building from source. Slightly different method. Please don't say sausage when Wendy's in the stream and English Bob's around, please. You had to go there, didn't you, Zeb? Yeah, the <laughs> painting pictures with words there. Nice ones. Only to soul. stop a beast from doing it. No, you've just incited him now, haven't you? Yeah, he can't help himself, <laughs> can he? Hey. So, Silent, when are we going to see the release of Manstick Linux? <laughs> Manstick. <laughs> Knew that was coming. It had to come. Then. That's Zeb's fault. It wouldn't be EB if it. I'd shout imposter. Didn't happen. Oh, what was that? Wine staging version? Very nice. 5.3.1. Peace. You'll have, Johan, you'll have to go over to DistroTube. Derek, that's on his channel, dude. And Keeney Linux. Trust you, Johan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the beauty of this ecosystem, and there's so many distros out there. Yeah. You know, I'm, just, just I'm throwing another one on the pile. <laughs> Forgive yeah. my ignorance, but at this point, you're running a script that's building an ISO, and is it stuffing or are these are packages that it's getting from the AUR or Arch and it's stuffing those into the ISO so that when someone boots they're there to be installed on their system. Yeah. So this is the build script. And this comes with if I go back steps in user share Arch ISO. You download Arch ISO and it reinitially reinitializes in it ram fs creates a new image supports this get two configs in here ignore that one this never did work but you get baseline and you get relang relang is the standard build process for building a standard arch iso so if i were to run this build script i would end up with a standard arch iso so what you do you take this as a template and Pop it in your home folder, name it whatever you like, and air root FS, think of that as your overlay. That is going to be the ISO. So, for example, under boot, I have a couple of themes that you can choose from for the bootloader, rub screen rather. ETC is obviously your standard stuff in ETC, which is all of this has been configured directly from the arch wiki so i've gone into the arch wiki looking at light dm looking at more pro amd etc bulk it profile d and taking everything they say about setting it up for particular scenarios and creating those config files for those scenarios scale is obviously the home folder or the skeleton so, so this is what generates the desktop that you see here Styling and everything. Uh, tweaks and primarily under here limits, limits conf for gaming and things like that. System D, system, uh, sorry, in there, limits.conf, system user conf. Certain optimizations are happening to make gaming easier. The rest of it is all standard stuff, there's nothing really going on except for uh, I've written a couple of scripts which assist me when building them. 
version, for example, will update all the version numbers in the build script. LSB release, OS release, they will get updated with new versions. So it just saves me having to do it. The local repo where I build all the packages sat in here. And they're all signed me. In Calamare, you have a branding module and this file gets updated as well at the same time. So when I recompile Calamari, that's up to date as well. So it's just to make that build process a lot easier. If we go back But to I that. think the short answer to your question, Alan, might have been Calamari's made some changes where you can get people to pick what packages they want installed from the live USB. Yeah. And lots of people like that idea. Yeah. So basically it's no, it nice to see the whole the whole flow though. Calamari gives you've now got this uh, net install YAML and net install is a bit misleading because it's a module within Calamari which allows for net install processes to occur. It is not a true complete system net install as people understand it. Uh, uh, that advice I renamed the video I put up it isn't a true net install except now all of these packages are being installed directly from the net. So in that sense, it is a net install. Okay. The OS itself, the, under, the underlying delivery system is still going to be FCE or Plasma, because there's two ISOs. Up. So now I've just created categories like video application, system application, office, etc., and popped a few things. The things that were on the ISO initially that were large have now been taken out. They're now optional. Choose these. Install time. This file sits on the ISO and will get removed at the end of the install process. Is that the the tree thing you see in Calamari is where you like? Yeah, yeah. Little... that's the configuration right. file. And that's what seed that, right? See, that's now nice. hitting my um. No. No. Previously, I mean, the ISO came out at the XFC 2.5, 2.6 gigabytes. Now been reduced to 1.2. Doing it this way, so saved an awful size of. Nice, thank you. You're welcome. And sometimes when you're doing this, you can get into a situation because it. I don't know, but opens up proc and this mounts them all, and the Shiru environment work. Sometimes that gets locked, so. Obviously, I've created a few little scripts that help me clear the lock and clean up behind itself. So now that's produced an ISO. And I've modified the build script slightly so that it creates a SHA checksum file, SHA 5112 checksum for the ISO. So people can check that against the ISO to make sure it's valid. SourceForge also does that for you. But I like to produce my own and I upload those to SourceForge. Check the bill. Neat. And now, if I do clean, so obviously, what I've done to make it easier for me, go into my bash, I've created a dot devl aliases files, which just allow simple command. Otherwise, have me type more than I need to. Just a optimization over time work fold out fold clean chiru or will be one just so you've built like two or three times in the while I've been watching this video is that just yeah. like tweaking packages or you're building the XFC version and the plasma version or uh, just the XFC version at the moment. Well, actually, this is what has been dubbed Arch ISO dash net because it's using the net install module primarily, even though the others do use that. They were only delivering the NVIDIA drivers and the Intel U code, AMD U code, CUDA as optional for people. Huh. CUDA for DaVinci Resolve, uh, Blender, things like that. If you have NVIDIA graphics card. Buddha, it can take advantage of 
So those are things because those are things I'm primarily interested in is you know 3D graphics and rendering. I, I use Blender. I use other 3D applications, uh, music production, multimedia creativity, great graphics. And so the whole idea behind Sailor initially because I couldn't find any distribution out catered for all of my needs in one go without me having to go through the of installing all the things that I wanted. I thought, well, how hard can it be? Eventually, I got building my own ISO, Deb and EB, and you need to get this out there, good enough to go out there. Eventually, I'm yes, now out in the wild. So that's pretty much it, I think. I mean, that's the build process. This is the new going to be delivering. Uh, obviously, it's going to increase people's install time, whereas before the new system could be changed to the Z standard compression, decompression, extremely quick using ZST. Um, a typical install on this rig, and this isn't a particularly overpowered rig. 4i7-8700K, 32 gig of DDR4, good. running on MD, fairly capable. Uh, a typical install would take less than four minutes. That's now gone up to about eight minutes, depending on what you choose in the package. I did a pretty full selection. It'd take a bit long. Silent, can I ask you a complete unaware? Not, I don't have a lot of knowledge as far as the technical side of what you're doing, but what is the difference with a net install? I've always wondered that. I've, I mean, I've seen the difference as far as trying to install that way, but, okay. but I don't know how it's done. I just would be curious to know that. Okay. So previously, um, I have a custom repo here, and these are all the packages that. I build personally load on the ISO or did. Okay, so those are all the packages. And what I was doing in pacman.conf, I was pointing it to the custom repo, which is the local repo on my hard drive. So what at build time what it would do, it would look in that folder and it would pull those packages in. And include them on the ISO that way locally. Now I have an online repo, so the net install now is pulling those packages from my GitHub. So a net install okay. is pulling files in from online rather than locally. Okay, so that's what I was wondering. So net means actual internet, as as I suspected. Exactly that. Yeah, exactly that. But just so you know, Joe, if you do a um, tumbleweed.net install, you would, as in the true sense of what some people would understand it, is you would download about an 800 or no, not even that, probably about a 400 meg ISO. And then everything that would normally sit on the USB key, you download from the net. Yeah. Whereas what. Um, silent has done is he's still got his 1.6 gig iso with all his lovely bits on but now he's made it 1.2 gig smaller by not including all those packages you will just pull those packages in from the internet like you said at install time if you choose them in the installer if you don't choose them you will just get a standard install a very minimal xfce install it will be themed like you see on the screen now because that is the salient branding if you like um, but other than that, you won't have very many packages at all. So from a common sense standpoint, that, that makes the most sense because now you're pulling in exactly what you want to have. You don't have to be hosting all of that, which that all makes a ton of sense. Yeah, so the, the only thing I would probably add is I will probably rebuild this after the stream and actually add Firefox because at the moment there is no browser. You have to select a browser in the installer, otherwise you don't have one. And that's very easy to install anyway. Anyone who's used to Arch knows they can do a Pac-Man dash capital S Firefox and 
is in got Firefox. Um, but I think it does make sense to have at least one browser installed, and the default across the board seems to be Firefox. In most distributions, Firefox seems to be the default browser. Piece. So even if everyone removes it and puts Chrome, on. and I always use Chromium anyway. I don't like. I I keep both browsers around just for testing purposes if I'm doing web development to make sure things work yeah, in other browsers. Here. But I tend to prefer Chromium. And oh, interesting. I, I had to install it the other day to try out state Google Stadia because it didn't work in, in Firefox or Chrome for some reason, so I ended up using Chromium, which yeah. worked better. I just use uh, Chromium with the Chromium Widevine plugin, and that's it. Oh, that, that's my Netflix sorted out, everything sorted out, nice. anything I like online. And you'll be happy to hear, uh, Silent, that that was probably the Snap version as well. Of what? Now, now. Oh, I see. <laughs> Alan, did I hear, though, that you're now Hang going to be thinking on. about undoing the Snap of Chromium, or was that just internet FUD? I don't know where that came from. FUD. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. So, interestingly, we looked at the compression ratio uh, ratios of the different... Um, uh, algorithms and for snaps they're using XZ at the moment and someone did some analysis and I think looking at Z what did you call it ZSTD or something whatever it's called Z standard yeah think, dot ZSTD yeah that one I think they're looking at maybe using that instead because it'll be a, a lot faster to unpack the the files but it's they did some analysis and it it depends on like whether it's a a, a a file that's got lots of small files in it or a file that's got lots of medium size or if it's got lots of large files and it's kind of, you know, different depending upon what types of files are inside it. It's very difficult. But Yeah. Well, this, yeah. Is, this is what the Arch team discovered. ZSTD and XZ trade blows in their compression rate, recompressing all packages to ZSTD with our options yield a total of a 0.8% increase, increase in package size on all of our packages combined. But the decompression time for all packages saw a thirteen hundred percent speed up. That is phenomenal. Yeah. So, I think the the problem we saw was that that's true on AMD sixty four, but it's not true on other architectures. And I know many distros don't care about other architectures, but if you're running on ARM, I think that those numbers are not the same. Okay. Well, it's definitely true for Intel because that's what I'm running. And right. using XZ compression previously, the install would take just just under ten minutes, and now it takes under four. That's amazing. Which is a huge increase. So I'm very happy about that. People, I mean that you know, Calamari is a work in progress. Distro agnostic, multi-platform installer. So and. Luckily for you guys, it's already in Ubuntu repos. You don't have to compile it. It's there as an application you can install. I have to compile it, of course, and set it yeah, up. Yeah, we, we did look at it, but unfortunately it's got some bits missing that that we need. So we couldn't we couldn't we haven't switched to it. I don't I don't think we ever will, to be honest. But you know it has flavors can. You know it has OEM capability. Yeah. They recently added that, didn't they? They did indeed. That was one of, that was one of the things that, that we will miss well it's there now and it's extremely interesting what they're doing with that because you can not only use it as a an installer to get the system on the system a delivery system you can use it as a post install system as well for setting up packages and other things there's, nice. a, there's two ways of using it now and that's something i was looking at as well using it as a post install method rather than forcing people to install what they want at install time, get the system installed, and then once they boot in, let them set up their username and everything using it as a post process, and then they can choose their packages and do that when they're on the system. That's another thing I'm looking for. So with the pulling down of the packages from the internet, I remember when I, it's been some time, but I remember when we tried your distro sometime, I don't know, I'm going to say last year or so, um, I remember it got to about 21% and it would just kind of just sit there for a while. And then all of a sudden, boom, it would blast past. Is that what causes that? Yeah. The, no, they've changed the compression standard on all packages across the arch. 
ecosystem um, it's much much quicker at decompressing now I mean the OS itself installs very very quickly and what I was doing before I can actually show you the files for in um, the unpack module but it's so, like most things Joe you show me somebody who can build um, an application that tells you what it's doing and how long it's going to take and then get it right yeah. how long how, how often have you gone to move like say 50,000 files and it's gone oh this is going to take nine and a half years I'll oh, finished well, I mean, already, yeah, I mean, really. looking at Windows as a, a prime example of that, if you do right-click, do properties on a file, you get three different um, versions of what they consider the size to be, size on disk, the size of the file, and there's another one that I can't remember. Now. And at the same on Linux as well, you can right-click, do the properties on a file, do the same thing in a terminal, and you get different values for the size of that file. Anyway, because it creates um, a squash FS file system, you can either use squash, F squash FS to unsquash the file system, or, which is what I was doing previously, so I'm just testing the um, unsquash processing. You can actually do an rsync of the system right across. So when you boot from the live media, when it boots into the system, you can tell it to do an rsync of that system so you get a vanilla copy of what you see on the live medium is going to be exactly what you see on the system everything's directly across now i'm testing the speed differences between doing a squash and unsquash compared to an rsync copy i've yet to do that properly i need time both that's something that and when you tried this what, over a year ago now, it was um, it's evolved a lot further down than what it was back then. User feedback, fixes, bug, bug fixes, regressions, that crap. All of those things have been fixed now. But even that, when I, with that slight, the only thing that that kind of, I guess, hang time. Yeah. did was it made you wonder was there something going on but it's like it's still overall i remember it being a very quick installation even that yeah and there's um i can, I can show you what's yeah if you go to the issues opened a Packages module this is opened by me, which has now been closed because that's being being put into 3.2.1 21 milestone. Fix this. In the one of the modules is the packages module. And in that module you have the ability to move or try and remove certain packages. And part of its reporting when it's doing that in the code itself states that it should be either removing one package or removing a number of packages with names so that you can see that progress happening as it's happening and that isn't happening so they're going milestone build that should be fixed now. so there's a few things and what people need to remember with calamari is distribution independent you know, there's an awful lot of work going non-trivial very very achieve what they have with them they're also lovely people i met uh uh Adrian de Groot a few times and he's a lovely lovely person yeah and he is. just wants it to be he wants it to be used like everywhere and wants it to be improved and wants to know how to improve it he's just like constantly wants to make it better Yep, and he does a lot of work. I mean, I think he's with um the KDE project primarily. Yeah, yeah, I met him at um at a KDE event um a year or so ago. He's just a super nice guy. And Philip I as well. Off I've got, uh, I've, oh, what Philip from Manjaro? Yeah, Philip Mueller is both lovely people. Oh, he is. Yeah, we, I had beer with him in um, 
recently. We, we invited him to a Snapcraft Summit. And uh, yes, lots of fun stories. He's a lovely chap. I do. I highly recommend going out for a beer with him if you get an opportunity. <laughs> lovely chap. Awesome. <laughs> I need to drop off. Got to go and do a podcast. Thank you. Super informative. Really Thank you very much for popping by, Alan. No worries. Take care. Always guys. a pleasure. See you later. Take care. You know, I have to um, just lost my train of thought for a second. Um, I was going to say when you're talking about the details, most people, and I don't do this necessarily every time, but there's certain majority of the time I will open up the details option to be able to watch what's being installed on software or whatever or packages for whatever I'm putting in. And, and it's more, I think, because I'm curious and it's part of learning this as we go along. And I, I wonder, I would love to know how many people actually ever do that. Well, there's one thing you can do. If I um, load that ISO back in, show you quickly what you So I will not initialize the install of the standard way. I will do it through a terminal. This gives you really interesting output, very useful output for debugging purposes. It actually has a switch to put it into debug mode, which is what I do when I'm testing it. The installer to make sure everything's happening as it should do. I'll put Calamari into debug mode to see the output. And sometimes if there's an issue, I will upload that so that the Calamari team see it so if i go sudo calamari dash d you can see now we have a lot of terminal output so even just switching that to the language coming into here just choose something. Then can just that. And you can see the next step. Go next. Next step. It's outputting every every step that it's doing. Each module has its own particular output so that you can see what's happening at each step of the way. This is so fascinating. You know, I've never, I've often wondered, like I mentioned that when Alan did, Alan did a video the other day um, on some of the processes of testing and stuff. And, and I've often wondered what was involved in that but even this i mean yeah. you have no clue i mean i obviously you know coding is very <laughs> intense and in depth and i think it takes certain type of people to be able to do that but i do find this very fascinating and interesting and i i, I don't know if, how many people really do i do um and i think it's like he mentioned earlier about streams like this you know yeah to a lot of people it might seem boring but i i find this stuff very fascinating and i think it's part of the education process of seeing what goes actually goes into these these distros and Absolutely. the work involved and and this is quite difficult too because each job calamar is, is built up for several modules and each of those are considered job each of those jobs has been given a different weight because there's different things going on and that is how this progress is determined and what they've done recently has added more weight to the unsquash fs side the unpack fs side of it has now got more weight so the progress goes up quicker you see it's at 41 percent now so yep. it, installing the operating system is now very quick that's done the file copy has been done the os is now installed now it's doing the um make making it cpio so it's creating the init ram fs image then it will go off and do the bootload well it allowed the user they go creating user silent then it's doing the hardware clock now it's installing the packages and which invokes pacman because that's the installer for arch there's lots of back ends here for this so it doesn't matter which system you run this on it i think there's about eight eight or nine different package managers so it's got yum it's got pacman it's got um, apt all of them are catered for within calamari so it will detect what the back end is and it will invoke it 
to use that to install the packages that you've chosen at the beginning of the install. And just for your info now, Joe, what will it will do is the more packages you choose, the longer it will sit at eighty-seven percent. Yeah, now this will now be a lot quicker because I only chose I only chose the Zen kernel and nothing else. So now that's done. Very quick install. You can see the the time it takes to install is also very dependent on the packages you choose. Because obviously, if you're installing things like LibreOffice Flesh, uh, Fresh, uh, Blender you know, large packages, that's obviously going to hit <clears throat> your internet connection quite hard. So depending on the speed of your internet will determine the speed of the install and your hardware to a degree, but primarily your internet. Yeah, because before um, Silent introduced all of these offerings, it used to take a tad over three minutes to do his install. The minute you start adding the kernel, NVIDIA, CUDA, AMD, Blob, and all the rest of it, the last install I took took seven and a half minutes. Yeah. So if you then keep adding more and more and more, it will take a little bit longer. But then, it, you know, it's a trade-off. I mean, it is a good way to get... Now that those packages are optional, not everybody wants two browsers. Not everybody wants music applications that i chose or the video players that i chose and now it's an absolute godsend mate it's awesome and yeah. it's such a good job that you've done it and now it's a lot you know it's cut down a lot now so it's very minimal in that respect there's nothing in multimedia now unless you choose it i mean the options there you can go in and do a full ardor install with all the plugins and everything and then multimedia but would be full you'd have a big menu there but the underlying motive behind salient os is to give people for example the audio side in salient os uses real-time privileges and that is um something if you're using ardor or any digital audio workstation the latency is the thing you want to get down as low as possible. And one of the things that I've managed to achieve with Salient is uh, Metal Lord, frequents many of our streams, is a, an avid musician, and he uses Ardor and other programs, and he was able to get his latency down to two milliseconds. So that's the, the gap between pressing a key on the keyboard and hearing it through your speakers. That is phenomenal. You can't, I can't even achieve that under Windows. I can't get anywhere near it. I think I've got down to about seven after loads and loads of tweaking. And for us to be able to do that in Linux out of the box is awesome. Really awesome. Really awesome. Well, I have to tell you, there's a, there was a YouTube, there's another tech channel that I, I follow, and it's a husband and wife team thing. And they were talking quite a bit. Of, he's been talking more and more about Linux a little bit, but... He also admits to not really understanding like dual booting got brought up last night and things like that. But then, of course, then it was the twist came about putting Linux down, how nothing's changed for 20 years. And this has been, yeah, there's a lot of things about it that still could be improved. We all know that. But I think for somebody speaking like he does, I mean, he had 900 people watching him, so it's not a small audience. And to be talking... Uh, in, in an uneducated way, I guess, he's very, very intelligent when it comes to hardware because that's based on what is his channel is based on. But when he starts talking like that, it kind of gets under my skin because I know different just from being a user of it from even a decade ago to what it is now. And then even the last couple of years, you look at the, the leaps that this has made. And now, just like what you did here in the last year, year and a half, maybe whatever it was since we tried it, yeah. You know, and, and this is the thing that I think where people are more, they're, they're too close minded about this. And, and these are the kind of things, it's not so much pushing people to get on to use it as much as maybe educating them about it and then let them make the choice whether it's something they get curious about to use it. Exactly. Well, I hope you went on his channel and left him a comment. Oh, I was in the live chat, and I, I did. I explained, like, when you mentioned about dual booting, somebody came back with a comment to me that they said, oh, it's very expensive to do that. And I said, no, not really. It's just a matter of adding, because I said, just add a second drive, you know, and basically put it on the second drive and then just do the, and I even put the, the command there, sudo app, you know, or sudo update grub, 
you know, and then you'll have your low, you'll be able to pick which you want to go into. But that, again, that's the, I, I hate to use this word, but that's the <laughs> ignorance of people not understanding what it is. And then they, it was also talking about how heavy the learning curve is. Well, you know, realistically, anybody coming to it that's for the first time, it's going to probably take a good year to get comfortable with it, you know, before you could start feeling like you want to maybe really dive in. But it's not as difficult as everybody thinks. But I also think you have to have a certain mindset. You don't have to be a real techie person, but you have to have a mindset. You have to, number one, be, have the willingness to want to be able to, which is what I talked about in there, too. You need to have the willingness to be able to want to make that change to learn it, first of all, and then to take the time to just look at it. It's not as bad as they think. But, you know, and that's I think that's the frustrating part is when you hear these conversations and it, you know one breath we don't want to come across as linux fanboys you know we're enthusiasts in in many ways or just you there's users there's enthusiasts there's whatever level you want to call it. we we've even heard the phrase elitist but um the truth of the matter is that's true of both sides of the coin it's almost like if, if you know and the other thing comment i made too i says then why do you think because they keep talking about how great what i said then why do you think that microsoft has adopted linux and the kernel you know, if it was so terrible. True. Well, just, I mean, looking at the Arch Wiki here, just for professional example, there's so much configuration here that I've looked into to get it working really nicely in Alien. Um, and if I go to the Pro Audio Group, these are all the applications, all the packages available to exist. Pro Audio, Professional Audio. There's so many here. And I couldn't possibly include these because it would be a minefield. Some of them connect with others. And There's a lot to test here. There's a few choice ones that I have chosen. Uh, efficiency system. Cadence is, Cadence is an amazing tool. I'm not going to load it now because it will probably destroy the ring. But what this does, this hooks into Jack 2 and creates an audio stream that you can pass through any application. And when you run this, you don't need Jack control anymore. Cadence does it all. On this system, I've had it down to like two or three milliseconds, the same. So audio passer is amazing. And the quality, because I run... This system at Float 32 LE, which is like really high quality. So we're looking at, for production purposes, 48,000 hertz on the audio, which I can take it up to 192,000, which is the sound card in this reports, but there's no point in doing that um, just for efficiency purposes. 48,000 is great for recording. So I can plug uh, an external USB audio device that I can plug a good bass guitar into I can plug a MIDI synth in and I can use soft synths in our door or whatever door I choose and it's practically real time I press a key and I'm hearing the sound come to the speakers instantly there's no delay whereas before when I was trying this on Windows I use Reason 10 which is why I still dual boot because there's certain applications that just simply don't work that's the way they've been built it's not going to happen and I can't get that same responsiveness in Windows as I can in Linux, which is why another reason why I built was to cater for my audio needs. So I create music as well outside. So, well, both sides have their strengths and weaknesses. We know that. And, absolutely. you know, that's absolutely. where if they were able to work together more i mean can you imagine where you could go with this you know it's it's i i'm getting really excited with some of the things i see coming down here and and again you know here's another example of what you're describing here it's similar but not the same thing a website most people they know they open a browser they go search they look for what they want and they see these pretty websites but if they really knew that that was just basically a polished cover over what you're really looking at. It's you're looking at basically, you know, a, a screen full of code that's been polished up to something that everybody could understand. And most people don't realize that and the amount of work to get there. 
Right. That's why I think Rocco does a fantastic job. Zeb, all the, you know, you guys with when we get on those Biddle streams and yes, you want to give feedback, but you want to be, do it in a tactful, polite and respectful way because of the amount of work that goes into this. You don't want to come across as, you know, bashing something or I hate it or, you know, yeah. If you don't care for a color on something, that's the beauty of it. You could change it. You could do all these different things and, Absolutely. you know, windows you're more limited on it and what you can do and you won't have anywhere near the customizability but so you you have to take account that there are real people behind every bit of these tools that are being put out there yeah I mean, there's a lot of work goes into it people don't realize what goes into you know obviously if you're a technically minded developer and things like that you you understand what's going on but the average person wouldn't understand you know that they wouldn't understand they don't understand initially what goes into creating distribution you know it's it's a lot of work it takes time to like hone that skill so that the workflow more efficient you know like canonical the ubuntu flavors the many different flavors of have created an awesome base that people can just take and manipulate in a way to create their own spins and that's that's amazing that's the beauty of linux and uh, it's very difficult because it's an open ecosystem. It's easy to do. Other systems out there, Windows, Mac OS, for example, closed source. So it's very hard to manipulate it in any way to make your own version of it. I mean, people have done that, but it's really still the core operating system underneath it. They may just change the theming or the skins of it and things not the same as building a distribution from scratch where everything that has gone into that is something that you've chosen deliberately uh well Linux mint Sailing, it's not well, the one thing you can do is I'm going to put the command in the chat for you. and we do our appointment and we're done okay, you know so course. it's a tool for me but that's the only time i'm in that machine other than that i'm in this one 99.9 percent .9 of the time you know and that's my choice sorry i missed that last bit joe because um my discord decided to quit oh that's uh, that's okay i just got a little long-winded about the you know, basically, just the long and short of it was just looking at, as we've said over and over again, that these are tools, you know, and it's the tool for the job. And it's, you know, the choice you pick, you know, do I want a flathead screwdriver or do I want a Phillips? It's whichever one does the right, you know, does the right tool for the job for what you need it for. And that's it, you know, and, and I agree with that. This should never be forced on somebody. That's why last night when I saw all of what they were discussing on there and where they were going, there's a side to me I always thought, well, good, you keep thinking that way, and we'll just keep this this really pleasant, you know, thing to ourselves then, if that's the case, you know, and we'll enjoy it, and you, you'll just miss out, you know? Well, everyone, I think I'm going to end the stream here. It's been really interesting and entertaining. Thank you, everyone that joined in the Discord. I appreciate it. Them. Thank, um, yeah, thank you for having me on and indulging me. So. Hopefully this gives you some insight into how Thalium is built. Maybe you find it interesting, maybe you don't. Voice. Well, Silent, you have done a fabulous job. You know, I've not, for me, you know, to learn a whole nother, um, you know, like Pac-Man, I'm sure it's not hard or whatever. I'm so used to app now or whatever. That's why I've gotten kind of settled in on the Ubuntu side. But yours was probably one of the first Arch distros that 
or arts district based that I, I absolutely loved. And uh, I will take another look at it again and maybe just throw it on a laptop or something. Cause you have done a fabulous job. I want to give you kudos for that. Thank you very much. Joe. I appreciate that. And thank you everyone in the chat. I hope you enjoyed the stream and it wasn't too boring for you. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you want. Thumb it up, thumb it down. I don't mind. It's entirely up to you. See you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.